Hypothesis testing for the mean when the population standard deviation is known. The p-value or the probability value using the test statistic we have a z-score for the sample mean to test the probability that the null hypothesis is true. So again, I just want to refresh when we're doing z-score, when we find the value of a z-score, it gives us the probability or the area under the curve. This is used when the sample statistic is greater than or equal to 30. So when your sample size n is greater or equal to 30 and your population standard deviation is known, or sigma, and the population is normally distributed. The formula for the test statistic or the z-score that we would use to find the probability or the area under the curve is this, where we're finding the sample mean minus the population mean, and then we're going to divide it by this population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So finding the p-value for our hypothesis test. For a left tail test, and we know it's a left tail test by the alternative hypothesis statement, if we have a mean is less than some value k, it is a left tail test. And the probability, or our p-value, will simply equal the area under the curve. So if we have the z-score, we can find the area. And again, we're going to be using our TI-83 or 84 calculators. And as a review, when you're given the z-score, how to find the area, you would use the second VARS distribution menu, choose number 2, and when it's to the left, you're going to use a negative 10,000 and then the z-score. Press enter through, and then you'll find the area. So if it is a left tail test to find the area under the curve, you'll use the calculator. So working with a right tail test, and again, you're always looking at the alternative hypothesis statement, and if you have the mean is greater than some value, that would be a right tail test where the area is shaded to the right. Well, to find our p-value, it's going to be 1 minus the area that we find from the z-score. Now, we could do it in our calculators by putting in the z-value in the lower limit, and then in the upper, you put that 10,000, and then enter through, and it will give us the area to the right. And for a two-tail test, and it's a two-tail test, when our alternative hypothesis is not equal to, so our mean's not equal to some number, that's when it's a two-tail test. To find the p-value, or the probability, you will multiply 2 to the area to the left. So you, again, you're going to be using the area to the left. You're going to find that area, and then you're going to double it, similar to the left tail test, but you're going to have to double it because you have two shaded areas or two tails. So using the p-value to make a decision, and we're always making the decision on the null hypotheses. So to use the to use the p-value to make a conclusion in a hypothesis test, you're going to compare the p-value to alpha. So if you have a p-value and it's less than or equal to alpha, we would reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, then you fail to reject the null hypothesis. So this is important information. We're doing the test, and we're always basing our conclusion on the null hypothesis. So when we test the p-value to alpha, we're going to either reject the null or fail to reject based on where the p-value is. And a key note here is that alpha will be given. Also, if the test statistic is a z-score, is given, you will find the p-values by finding the area for the z-score. 
So let's do an example here. We want to find the p-value for a left tail hypothesis test with a test statistic of z equals a negative 2.23. Decide whether to reject the null hypothesis if the level of significance is equal to 0 0.01. So the first thing we're going to need to do is find the area. So with a z-score, you're going to have to look it up or put it in the calculator and find the area that is associated with a z-score of a negative 2.23. So if you do this in the calculator, it would be that second VARS button. And because it's to the left, our lower limit would be that negative 10,000. And our upper limit would be our z-score. And we're going to find our area. And the area, in this case, when I plug it in, I would end up getting our p-value would equal 0 0.0129. Now I have the area. And I can compare that p-value to our alpha. And in this case, our alpha is 0 0.01. So I'm testing to see, is that p-value less than or equal to alpha? Or is that p-value greater than alpha? So if you look here, that 0 or 0 0.0129 is greater than 0 0.01. Therefore, it meets the condition of greater than, so that means we would fail to reject our null hypotheses. So that's what we would state. We fail to reject our null hypotheses. This next example, we have a p-value for a right tail test for the hypotheses test with a test statistic z equals 1.42. And then we want to decide whether we're going to reject the null if our level of significance is equal to 0 0.10. So again, you're going to take that z-score and you're going to convert it to a p-value by finding the area. And because it's a right tail test, when you use the calculator, your lower limit will be the z-score and the upper will be that 10,000. Once you find the p-value, or we're going to find the area, and in this case we end up being 0 0.0778. And that is our p-value. The p-value and area are the same. And now I'm doing the comparison. Is 0 0.0778 greater than 0 0.10 or less than? And in this case, it is less than, which means it meets the condition our p-value is less than or equal to alpha, so we would reject the null hypotheses. So we end up with rejecting the h sub 0. And now this next example, we're finding a p-value for a two-tail hypothesis test. So when we have a two-tail hypothesis test, the first thing you're going to need to do is find the area for the z-score. So when you find the area for the z-score, then you're going to have to double that area. So in this case, we end up with a p-value of 0 0.0324. I'm taking that and I'm comparing it to my alpha. And in this case, alpha is 0.05. And we see that this is less than, our p-value is less than alpha, so we would reject the null hypotheses. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have ended up with rejecting the null hypotheses. Pause and try. So in this case, you should have ended up with fail to reject the null hypotheses. Pause and try. So this ends up rejecting the null hypotheses. Pause and try. So in this one, the p-value was given. So all you had to do was compare. So we ended up with rejecting the null hypotheses. Pause and try. So in this, you ended up with just comparing, and it fails to reject the null hypotheses. So now when you're interpreting the decision 
of the original claim. So we're going to be doing hypotheses testing. We're going to do step by step to test the hypotheses. And then at the very end, you're going to have to make a statement of conclusion that we would make based on what we found. So here is a guideline on how to write that statement. So if we have a hypothesis statement where the claim is on the null hypothesis, if the claim is on the null hypothesis and it rejects the null, so keep in mind the claim is on the null and now we did a test and we found that it was rejected the null. Well, what that means is our statement would have to have the fact that we warrant rejection of the claim. So if you have a statement to make when the claim is on the null and we reject the null, you want to make sure that you use the word rejection or reject the claim. That is indicating that the claim was on the null hypothesis. So this next case is when the claim is on the null hypothesis and we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we're never going to say that the hypothesis is true, but we're going to just state more or less that there's not enough evidence to warrant rejection of the claim. So you want to state it in a way that incorporates the right wording for these hypotheses tests. So if the claim is on the null hypothesis, whether we reject or fail to reject, you want to make sure that that word reject or rejection is in your statement, whether it's not enough evidence warrant rejection or it is enough evidence to warrant rejection. Now, when the claim is on the alternative, so that when the claim is on the alternative, we're still testing the null hypothesis. So if we reject the null hypothesis and the claim is on the alternative, that would mean that our claim is most likely true. But we wouldn't state that in our statement. What we would say is there's enough evidence to support the claim. So we want to say that we're supporting the claim when the claim is on the alternative. Now when the claim is on the alternative and we fail to reject the null, well that means that the null is most likely true. That means that our claim would be false. So we would state in our statement that there is not enough evidence to support the claim. So what I'm trying to say here is the wording of the statement is important. If it's on the null and the claim is on the null, you want to use the word reject or rejection in your statement somewhere. And if the claim is on the alternative, you want to use the word support whether you support or you're, not, you're not, not enough evidence to support. So it's important in the distinction of how you write your statements for the decision. So now we're going to step out the process for hypotheses testing using a p-value for a z-test for the mean. So the process is you're going to first state your null and your alternative hypothesis statement. Always identify your claim. That's very important because in the end you're going to have to make a decision and you're going to have to write your statement. Then you just want to identify what your alpha is and so just pull it out of the information. And then we're going to find our p-value, that test statistic or that z-score. And we're going to be using the calculators to find that p-value. And again, you're seeing, is the p-value less than or equal to alpha? If it is, you reject the null. If it's greater than alpha, then you fail to reject the null. So this is the testing process. Once you've done this work, then you're going to interpret your decision in the context of the original claim. So you want to make sure when you're interpreting that decision in the contents of the original claim that if you have the claim on the null, you're using the word reject or rejection, whether you fail to reject or there's not enough evidence to reject, 
or there's enough evidence to reject. Um, if the alternative, the claim is on the alternative, you're going to use the word support, whether you fail to support or there's enough evidence to support the claim. So we're going to use the TI-8384 calculators to find our p-value. So I showed you how to find the p-value in the previous examples. When we're doing the testing for a hypothesis test, we can do that information directly in our calculators. So to find the standardized p-value for this example, that number three step, I'm going to show you how to do that in the TI-83s. So we have this a sample of 38 items is chosen from a normally distributed population with a sample mean of 12.8 and a population standard deviation of 2.8. Add a level significance of 0.05. Test the null that the population mean is 14. So we have the statement written for us where the null is equal to 14 and the alternative is not equal to 14. So it's important that you state the null and the alternative before you do any steps further. Another key note that I want to emphasize and continue to emphasize is that our population mean is always used in the hypothesis statement. So the population mean is in the claim. So if it's not told that the population mean is 14, you know it's the population mean because it's in the hypothesis statement. So now how we enter this into our calculator is you're going to go to your stat key, you're going to arrow over to test, and you're going to choose one, the Z test. When you choose the Z test, you're going to see this menu. So in this menu, you're going to want to arrow over to that stat and highlight it. So if data is highlighted, you're going to have to arrow over to stat and hit enter, and that will highlight it. Then you're going to arrow down and you're going to enter in the information. Your mu sub zero is the population mean, and in this case is 14. And then you're going to put in your standard deviation, which is 2.8, your sample mean, which is 12.8, and the sample size, which is 38. Key note that I want you to see is that that last step, notice that you have the not equal to, the less than, and the greater than. So it's all based on your alternative statement. So you have to make sure that in your calculator, you're highlighting the alternative statement. And in our example, we have not equal to, and it is highlighted. If it was something other than not equal to, you would have to arrow over to it and hit enter. So that last entry, make sure that you're looking at your alternative statement and you are highlighting the correct highlight, correct option. Once you have everything entered in, you're going to hit calculate and you're going to get your p-value and notice that it also gives you your test statistic, which is that z-score. So when you enter it into the calculator, it will do the p-value for us. So we don't have to worry about a left tail test, a right tail test, or a two tail test because when you highlight that last option, it takes into account what tail test we're working with when it calculates our p-value. So in this case, we have a p-value of that 0.0082. You always want to go four decimals. And we have a test statistic of a negative 2.64. So our test statistic is that z-score. The p-value, and we're testing it against our level significance, and you see here that our p-value is less than the 0 0.05, or our alpha. And remember, when the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypotheses. So now that we've rejected the null hypotheses, we're looking to see where the claim is, and the claim is on the null hypotheses. And because the claim is on the null hypotheses and it was rejected, we can say that there's enough evidence to reject the claim.
and that's how you would write your decision. So it's really important that you're using the right wording and also make sure that you enter in the correct information into your calculator. So pause and try. You wanted to make sure that you entered it in correctly. In this case, our p-value is greater than our alpha, which means we fail to reject the null hypotheses. And because the claim is on the null hypotheses, there's not enough evidence to reject the claim. Pause and try. So in this case, we found that the p-value was less than alpha. So our test statistic is that z-score that we got, which is a negative 2.65. We rejected the null, but notice here the claim is on the alternative. And because we reject the null, the claim is most likely true, so we can say that there is enough evidence to support the claim. So make sure you're using the correct wording in your statement. So now this next one is a true example of what we would do for a testing of our hypotheses. So we're going to do this example. In auto racing, a pit crew claims that its mean pit shop time for four tires and fuel is less than 13 seconds. A random selection of 32 pit stops times have a sample mean of 12.9 seconds and a standard deviation of 0.19 seconds. Is there enough evidence to support the claim at a level significance of 0.01? And we're asked to use our p-value. The first step here is to write your hypothesis statement based on the claim. So notice here that we want to state based on the claim and you have that less than 13 seconds. Well, it doesn't have equality in it, so our claim is going to be on our alternative. So we have our mean, and make sure you use the right symbol, mu, is less than 13 seconds is our claim, and then you write the complement to less than which is greater than or equal to. The hypothesis statements are always opposite of each other and the equality statement always has to be with the null hypotheses. So now I stated the null and the alternative. Now I need to identify what alpha is. Alpha is given to you so you're just pulling it out of the problem. So our alpha here is 0.01. So now I want to use the calculator to find our p-value and that test statistic. So to do that, you want to pull out all the information you need. So you need your sample mean, you need your population mean, you're going to need that standard deviation, and you're also going to need that sample size. You're going to plug this all into the calculator, and remember you're going to your stat, stat button, hour over to test, choose number one and enter all this information in. So I'm going to emphasize this once again. Please make sure when you're using your calculator, when you get to that last option, that you highlight the test. So you make sure that you're highlighting the right alternative statement. So make sure in this case you have the less than symbol highlighted. Then you can calculate. Once you calculate, you will have your p-value. So in this case, our test statistic was a negative 2.98, and our p-value is 0 0.0015. Now I'm going to test that p-value, and I see that our p-value is less than our alpha. And when it's less than our alpha, that means that we reject the null hypotheses. So we're rejecting the whole null hypotheses. So what we can state here is the claim is on the alternative and we rejected the null. So at a 1% level significance, there is enough evidence to support, because the claim is on the alternative, the claim that the mean pit time, stop time, is less than 13 seconds. So let's do another example here. 
We have the National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases report that the average cost of bariatric weight loss surgery is 22500 You think this information is incorrect. You randomly select 30 bariatric surgery patients and find that the average cost for their surgery is 21545 with a standard deviation of 3015 Is there no, enough evidence to support the claim at a level significance of 0 0.05? And we're asked to use the p-value. So we're going to state our null and our alternative. And in this case, our claim is you think the information is incorrect. And that means that you think that it does not equal that 22,500. So our claim is on the alternative. And then we write its complement, which means it would equal. Then I'm just going to identify my level significance. And in this case, it's 0.05. And then I'm going to find my p-value by entering it into the calculator. And you want to make sure that you have the right option highlighted in the calculator for the alternative hypothesis statement. So you want to make sure that you have the not equal to highlighted in your calculator before you hit the calculate button. Once you hit the calculate button, you should come up with a p-value of 0.0828 and we're comparing it to 0 0.05, which is larger, so it p-value is greater than 0 0.05, which means we fail to reject the null hypotheses. And because we fail to reject the null hypotheses, and the claim is on the alternative, there's not enough evidence to support the claim. So at a 5% level significance, there's not enough evidence to support the claim that the mean cost of bariatric surgery is different from 22500 So key information is how to write that statement in the end. If the claim is on the alternative, it has the word support in it. If the claim is on the null hypotheses, it would have the word reject in it. Pause and try. So this is what your hypothesis statement looks like. The claim is on the alternative. You wanted to make sure in the calculator that you highlighted the greater than option. And then you would have got a p-value of 0.1793 with a test statistic of 0.92. It failed to reject your null. There is not enough evidence at an 8% level significance to support the claim. Pause and try. So your hypothesis statement has the claim is on the null, and we're testing. We get a p-value of 0.0082, a test statistic of a negative 2.64. We reject the null hypotheses, and because the claim is on the null hypotheses, there is significant evidence to reject the claim that the mean tuna consumption is equal to 3.6. Pounds. So it's important that you're using the right word claim is on the null hypotheses. Pause and try. Then you have your statement. You want to make sure that you have the right tail in the calculator. Highlight it. We get a p-value of 0 0.003. Now in this case, in your calculator, you might have seen that p-value, and at the end, it might have had that e with a negative number, negative 4 in this case. That's scientific notation, meaning that you have to move the decimal place to the left that number of times that that negative number is. That's where that, net, that 0 0.003 is coming from. The Z score or the test statistic is that negative 3.43 with the this means that we reject the null and if we reject the null and the claim is on the null there is significant evidence to reject the claim activating temperature is at least 135 Fahrenheit